We will now modify our simple program in such a way that it will be only possible to actuate output Q1 if input I1 is closed and the remaining inputs are not. In other words, if both input I1 and I2 are closed, the output Q1 will not be activated. We begin by selecting all connections existing between the blocks and removing them. To modify our program we will use a function end, which can be found under the basic functions. To get more information about this function, we can right-click on it and choose help option from the list. Here we can see all the information we need about how our function works. On the left, we can see the list of all blocks available in the program. Let's go back to our program and connect the blocks. We press F5 on the keyboard and switch to the Join tool. We draw connections between our inputs and the end function. To make our diagram easier to read, we can switch back to the selection tool and move our connections a little. Now we need to invert connections to the inputs I2, I3 and I4. This is crucial for the program to work properly. To invert a connection, we either double-click it on the diagram or right-click and choose the Invert Connection option from the list. An inverted connection is marked by a small square appearing at its end. Let's now switch to the simulation mode and see how our program works. Remember, the idea was to actuate output Q1 only if input I1 is closed and the remaining inputs are not. When we click on input I1, we can see the output Q1 is activated. However, if we close any of the remaining inputs, we can see that output Q1 is deactivated at once. This will happen whenever we close any of the inputs I2, I3 or I4. Now let's test our program on a logo. We click the online test icon and connect with the logo. We turn on the monitoring mode. We are ready to check how our program works on the device. We switch on I1. On the diagram we can see that output Q1 has been activated. Notice that our device also signals it with a light appearing above the activated output. However, if we flip any of the remaining switches to close input I2, 3 or 4, the bulb which indicates output Q1 goes off again. Now we will modify our program further so that when any of the inputs I2, I3 or I4 is closed, all of the outputs Q2, Q3 and Q4 will be actuated. To do that, we will use the OR function. Let's draw the connections. When we draw connections, we don't have to use all of the inputs and outputs of a given block. Leaving one of them disconnected will not affect the functioning of the program. Let's switch to the simulation mode and see how the program works. We can see that the AND function still works. When we close I1, Q1 is activated. Next, 
When we also close input I2, output Q1 is deactivated, and at the same time, all of the remaining outputs become active. We get the same situation when we click on input I3 or I4. Now let's upload our program to a logo, which should still be running because when we ended our last session, we didn't switch it to the stop mode. The program now asks whether to stop the logo. We need to press yes and the data transfer will continue. We click on the online test icon and switch our logo to the run mode. Then we go to the monitoring mode. We are ready to check how the program works. When we flip the I1 switch, we can see output Q1 activated in our program and a single light bulb light up on the device. When we close the second input, the first light bulb goes off, whereas all the remaining ones indicating all the remaining outputs light up. The light bulbs will remain lit also when we flip the second or the third switch.